Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back to Dubious Engineering. Today, we're taking apart and fixing a vintage megaphone. It was one that I got on eBay for not too much money, and <laughs> it's got quite a few things wrong with it. <laughs> it's comedic, it really is. Uh, so it's got a broken hinge and the electronics need sorting out. The siren doesn't work. It's got an automatic siren that's just rubbish. Not only do we fix this, but I then go ahead and irritate the wife to almost death. At which point she and the rest of my family get their own back towards the end of the video. Definitely well worth watching some of that. Anyway, without further ado, let's get on and show you around this megaphone and see how it works and how it does what it does. It doesn't work. Please be warned if you're wearing headphones, there are some loud siren noises. <laughs> so, this must be, this must, literally, this must be the automatic siren that automatically doesn't work, or automatically occasionally works when you don't want it to. <laughs> right, on with the show. So this is the uh, the base of the megaphone here. I've pulled the handle off with the trigger. And that's literally just a, a hollow tube and a trigger. So in the battery housing was the PCB and also the the battery holder. And <laughs> and in the battery holder there were lots and lots of batteries. Well, we're going to fix that in a little while. So the PCB itself, this is the main audio amplifier right here, this guy. And this is a TA7240AP. Uh, this is a little, well, it's got two amplifiers built into it, which you can bridge together and you can get about, get about 15 to 20 watts out of it. And then we've got a couple of CMOS chips. This guy here is, amazingly, it's a phased lock loop. So this is probably likely to be being used as an oscillator. It's a CD4016BE phased lock loop. And then this guy here is a CD40106BE, which is a hex Schmidt trigger. So I'm guessing they're using the phased lock loop and the Schmidt trigger to create a siren sound. So... So one of these will be an oscillator, and it'll literally sit there producing a, uh, a a square wave, and then the other guy will be uh, adjusting the frequency because uh, in the phase lock loop there's a voltage controlled oscillator, so uh, they'll be adjusting the frequency of the oscillator in the phase lock loop by adjusting the voltage in the bottom of it. So it's sort of simple but sort of clever at the same time. On the back of the PCB there were a couple of uh, uh, tracks that had got problems and also a couple of dry joints. So I've taken care of those. Let's then look at the microphone. And on the back of the microphone it says here, capacitor microphone. So that likely means it is a condenser style FET microphone and yes look there it is a capacitive uh, FET type microphone so you supply that with a little bit of voltage and uh, there's a couple of plates that uh, one of them is fixed and the other one vibrates when uh, when it receives a, a sound wave and there's a tiny little amplifier in here and yep there we go so just here we've got a couple of DC blocking capacitors in this little circuit in the top of the microphone here. And then we've got an interesting assembly at the bottom here. We've got a, a micro switch, which is nice to see. Listen to the click. Yeah, so that's a nice little micro switch here. Uh, you can slide this switch assembly upwards which turns the microphone on continuously so that's quite interesting uh, some cable restraints and then here we've got um, a little potentiometer which is linked to the drive output of the microphone so you can adjust the gain 
of the microphone. So all relatively simple and quite sort of cool. One thing I've always wanted to know <laughs> is how these work and why they are the shape they are. I can only assume that the shape is something to do with acoustics, is matching the acoustics of the small speaker, which hopefully is in the front here. Oh, wow, look at that, yeah. Okay, so what have we got? We literally, we've just got a large magnet on the base of here uh, with a cone that chucks that voice coil out to the cone. That cone, <laughs> that cone then reflects back down inside this cone, which then reflects again out of the large cone assembly. So effectively, we've got three cones, one inside each other. And if you were to put all of these cones together, like that, they would make one very big long cone. Uh, the idea is they've compressed one very long cone into a short space. That's quite cool. Oh, the hinge is broken. It's split, not just one side of it, but it's split on both sides. In the workshop, I have made a replacement hinge out of some aluminium and just sort of bent it all together. But uh, it doesn't look particularly pretty, but it does exactly what it says on the tin. Let's just undo, and there we go. So now you can lift the thing up by the hinge if need be. Now we've got a hinge. So another thing I'm doing here, I'm being a bit naughty really. <laughs> I'm recharging these alkaline batteries, Sainsbury's cells. So <laughs> it's quite interesting. So if we look at the meter, you can see that I'm pushing uh, about 150 milliamps into these, uh, into these cells. So you've got the power supply set for a maximum voltage of 3 volts and there's two cells here, one 1.5 volts each and uh, it's actually quite good because <laughs> you shouldn't really recharge um, non-rechargeable cells but uh, so hopefully you can see the meter and all of these alkaline batteries we're at 1.36, around 1.36 volts. So just to prove that to you, 1.36. Pretty much everything was around 1.36 volts, 1.359. So after they've been on charge, I've got two that I've charged up over here. After they've been on charge for a couple of hours, we get 1.426, so a significant a jump up, 1.426. So definitely worth putting these things on charge, gives them a second little lease of life. Some three in one oil. <laughs> Stole this bottle from my wife, it's wonderful. Little pipette type bottle. Just need to get a little bit of that on the switch contacts and the switch itself. Clean up those contacts. After a few throws of the switch, you can see there's a little bit of rust on the switch in here, but with a little bit of luck that should fix her up. There I fixed it. Yeah, look at the amount of crud that came out of there as well. Yeah, let's get that reassembled then.
So this uh, capacitor here is bulging. <laughs> I reckon there's a problem with that one. So we'll pop that one out. In fact, I've got a small selection of capacitors here. So uh, hopefully we should be able to replace most of the capacitors on this board. That one came out quite easily. It really wouldn't surprise me if there's actually quite a few, um, quite a few potential dry joints on this board. Right, new capacitor going in. I'm going to guess that this is something like a power supply capacitor. But this one is not fat. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but it's a swollen and the rubber at the bottom is almost popping out of its shell. So um, some of these caps are definitely, definitely got a problem. My megaphone works. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Bye. <laughs> honey, shut up. Hi, Pop. You know how annoying this is. It's Pixie Blue. The first thing that I have tonight has been my family. We've had a wonderful time. We never stop talking, laughing, shouting or whatever, but we always eat the food. So as long as everybody's happy, we're all happy. Hey. Hey.